Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia photographer, and today I've got a opportunity to improve the performance of my DSLR cameras to mimic that somewhat of my mirrorless cameras. Because, as you know, these mirrorless cameras, like this Sony A7 II, have an electronic viewfinder. And with that electronic viewfinder, it allows me to do things that my prism-driven view through the lens DSLR cameras don't do, which is review photos in the sun, be able to see like the exposure as it's captured more accurately than through the lens on the DSLR. You do have the button on like my Nikon, I know my D810 does it and probably the D200s do it as well, but there's a button on there you can press that'll actually stop down the aperture and let you see the amount of light the aperture is going to let through when you open the frame but what it doesn't show you is it doesn't factor in time so since it doesn't factor in time you can't see the exact exposure without just taking a test shot once you take the test shot therein lies the next problem on this sony it's got a little sensor up in here and that little sensor detects your face and when it detects it it switches off this display and switches it to the evf and of course all that's user settable the fact that it'll move the image up into the viewfinder allows me to review images in bright sun i can stick it up to my eye and i can actually just look through the images in here on top of that i have aging eyes and you've seen in more than one video me wearing reading glasses well with the evf you have a focus adjustment on all of them i've ever used just like on a dslr you have that doctor adjustment you can focus it to your eye so I can focus the EVF to where I don't need my reading glasses to see it. So I don't have to wear my reading glasses while I'm shooting. I can see all the information on the back display up here. Say I go into the menu mode. I'm pretty sure if I go to the menu, let me see, where's my menu button on this camera? Ah, menu. I'm gonna look in here. Yep, I can see the menu in here just like I can on the back. So it allows me to not need my reading glasses to go shooting. Now. With my Nikon D810, I really enjoy using the camera because it takes phenomenal photos. And because of that, I really like using it. But because of the functionality brought by the EVF on the mirrorless platform, I find myself gravitating towards those cameras more and more. And it's only because it's easier for me to interact with it. I don't, I don't even get my reading glasses out. I don't have to wear them all the time. It saves me having to deal with all that. I can just use the camera and I can focus it to, to match my eye. So because of that, I've not been using the D810 as much. And y'all have seen that with the videos as of late. It's been several weeks, even possibly a few months, since I've really done much with the D810. Until a, until a viewer sent me a link to Amazon to a device. This device allows you to see the back display in bright sun. It's basically, it's a cup that goes over it and then it also, because you're so close to it, it has a focus device on it. So you can focus it to your eye. Brilliant. So now, of course, you're now relegated to the resolution of the back display. You know, it's only like 3.6 megapixel or something like that. You know, 3.6 million dots, which is megapixels. But you can zoom in, all right? And then you can still see if you've got focus. You can kind of see if you... You know, like if you're shooting macro, if it focused on the back of the bug or the front or whatever, you can still see that with this device. So we're going to go out in the field out here, the backwoods of the property, and I'm going to do some macro photography today with the D810, and I'm just going to see how good this thing works. Now, I was going to give a shout out to the fella who gave me the link, but I'm just going to be honest with you. I searched for over an hour last night through comments, through all my previous videos, going back two or three months now, I cannot find that comment. I don't know if he deleted it. I don't know, because I didn't delete it. If you if you are watching this video and you are the gentleman or the lady who gave me the link, shout it out in the comments, because I really want to give you credit for this, but I cannot find it. I, was, I looked and looked and looked and looked, and I knew I should have screenshot it and saved it at the time, but I didn't do it. I apologize for that. So, with that, let's go out in the field. And this is it. It says Monitoring Pro 3.2X. 
It just says 3.2 inch LCD screen special. <laughs> I ordered it through Amazon, but apparently it came directly from China because the text on it is pretty much in Chinese on this sticker. I don't recognize any of the text. So I have yet to open it. So this is my first technical unboxing. <laughs> but that's all there is to it. Now, the gentleman that I was conversing with said that he didn't actually attach his to his camera like they say to in the instructions. He says it's got a, a device you couple it on and it stays on. But he says he just takes his and sticks it up against the back of the camera and just looks through the display. So let's give it a shot. Let's see how well it works. Let's see, I've got a photo in here from this morning. It actually magnifies it super well. Let's see here. I'm gonna take a quick picture with it. Oh, <laughs> y'all didn't see that. Now, let's see what it looks like. It actually works pretty darn good. Now, the key is, is to go out in the sun and try it. Really? Yeah. I gotta admit, that worked really well. I was shocked. There's a little light leak around it without using the little sealed band that goes on the screen. But, I see what he's saying. It worked. So let's go out and take some photos with it. Here's something else I figured out about it. And that's, this thing has thickness, okay? This thing is supposed to be installed on it, all right? I can pop it on there and you can see. So it's supposed to shim it out about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little better, maybe even five sixteenths of an inch. Because of that, I was looking at my screen and it wasn't exactly in focus. And when I backed my eye away a little, it, it suddenly got a lot sharper. And I think it's mainly because this isn't there because I'm not using it with this. And because of that, we're getting a little bit. Let me just stick this on here and take a quick peek. Let's see what that does for it. If I just stick this against it. Oh yeah, that changed everything. Now it's sharp, surprisingly sharp. And if you zoom in, I can zoom in significantly and it looks great. Yeah, okay, later. I'll probably super glue this in. That way I won't lose this. But for now, we're going to drop it in the box. I don't disappear it before I'm ready to. All right. Here I am literally next to the house. And I have our first rose of the year right here. So we're going to get a macro photo of it. You can see how close I am with this 60 millimeter. I mean, look at that. There's a cat. It's going to wiggle the rose bush for me. Thanks, cat. Appreciate all the help there. The display on the D810 is in full sun, so it'll also allow us to check that. So here we go. Oh, I like this. This works so well. Actually, it works better than I thought it would. Wow, this thing has got... This 60 millimeter F2.8 D Nikkor Micro lens is, ex is insanely sharp. Oh, kitty. You're wiggling the rose bush. <laughs> Here we go, getting our next shot. I always take more than one, especially with macro, because with macro, you'll miss the depth of field. I'm shooting at F16 to try and mitigate some of the diffraction problems that comes with shooting at real high F-stops. So let's see what this looks like. I can see the pixels in the display with this thing. That's pretty cool. It actually works a lot better than I thought, and it wasn't a lot of money. It was actually quite cheap. You just had to wait on it. It took it about two or three weeks to come in. With Amazon, that's a long time. All right, let's find something else to photograph now. <clears throat> I found our lavenders in bloom, so I'm gonna go get a picture of it. We have a little patch of lavender down here by this poor excuse of a <laughs> grapevine. What's the greatest enemy of wildlife or macro photography? 
the wind. I don't know if you can see this stuff moving. That makes it hard to get it focused and sharp. Real hard. These flowers are the prettiest of all of the ones on this bush. This is a honeysuckle bush is what we call it. It might actually have a real name other than that, but I've got these composed in such a way that you don't see the dead ones already. I'm just trying to get a good shot that's sharp. I've got my shutter speed already ran way up and the ISO is pretty high to get that shutter speed because I'm running F16 to get some depth of field. I'm only that far away from the flower, so at those kinds of distances, you've got to get the, you know, the f-stop up some to get some depth of field. So I'm gonna sit here and wait a few minutes, see if I can get the wind to calm down a little bit and try to get a nice still shot. Yeah, now I really like the photos that came out of that. And this little guy actually lets me see the focus on the back of the camera. I think what I will do though, is I will take that bracket that come with it and I think I'll just super glue it in or maybe tape it in with electrical tape or something to where it won't fall out and that'll give me that gauge line to get it to the right distance from the camera this thing works surprisingly well I honestly thought it was going to have like a little focus assembly in it so you could focus it yourself but it doesn't it just has a magnifying lens in it but yeah there's just a magnifying lens here it's got this little ring so you can hook it to this little deal to where you can take it off put it on the camera and when you get done it's got a little push lock deal and you push the button and it pops back on and you wear it around your neck so you don't lose it it's really really simple whoever it was that brought this up please leave a comment because i really appreciate you pointing me to this thing it it's incredible how well it's helped and it folds down nice and compact <laughs> but now what it doesn't have is something to store it in and this rubber that it's made of collects pollen real bad i've had to wipe it off a dozen times before i can take a decent photo of it but yeah that's what i got today i wanted to share a few macro shots from around the farm anyway this is david the georgia photographer and i appreciate you guys watching and if you like the video you know to hit the thumbs up if you like the channel and you want to see more content from this old guy down in georgia you know where that subscribe button is so until next time y'all get your camera out and go take a picture with it all right we'll see you later bye bye